Namaste, everyone. All right, hello. Now we are going to do a monthly forecast. I'm actually going to go a little bit longer than the month of September, too. We are in eclipse season. Today is September 3rd, 2024, at 1016 AM. We are in eclipse season. We have already been in eclipse season for some time, and we are thick into it. And you know, it's so funny, because today is Tuesday. Over the weekend, I was like, Oh, I should I should have made a post about the eclipse last weekend and then as an astrologer I could predict that by Monday every astrologer on their Instagram will be talking about the eclipse season as it's, as if it just started I just kind of like knew that would happen and that's exactly what happened I was like good god people are just following Instagram as their guide and that's such a problem with society uh, to begin with that people actually think that's like they can just go on Instagram and like get the best high quality info on the planet uh, in some ways you can in s when it comes to news or certain things but some types of information are just not meant to be laid out like a table spread for dinner and that's the whole problem with astrology um, and being an astrologer that you'll find when you go into more and more doing the professional side of astrology you will constantly have chances to sell yourself out and to be less ethical and to try to be better at marketing and ooh, everyone else is doing eclipse posts I've got to do an eclipse post or things like this and I encourage you to resist that and to focus more on just becoming a great astrologer and being inspired and staying true to your purpose and staying true to what your goals are and what your projects are And if that really is making an eclipse post on Instagram then sure do it but ideally it's something higher than that okay so this eclipse uh, I'm gonna read from uh, the Eagle and the Lark, Predictive Astrology by Bernadette Brady. She has a great breakdown of the sorrow cycles, which are when it comes to mundane astrology and all the best sources of like Western Hellenistic ancient Babylonian stuff, this is very good. And this works really great with us Vedic astrologers and what we do as well. So um, this is an 8 South Eclipse series. It started back in 1718 and it has uh, kind of a difficult chart. It has an exalted Saturn and it's right on the opposite side of the eclipse and the new moon uh, Mars midpoint and uh, it's this Saturn moon is just a truly like difficult placement. It makes one easily focus more on the negative or the side of loss but there is an exalted Jupiter that's really nice and there is a Venus delighting that Saturn. Um, there's also a debilitated Mercury in Pisces though. And and the 12th. And so this is kind of a what they describe. I do kind of agree with this. Uh, separation and loss is kind of the theme of this eclipse. Separation and loss. To be parted. To finish something. And to feel sad at its completion. Physical injury is also possible through overstraining one's strength. This is not the time to undertake strenuous physical activities. So we've already been in this window, and this window will go on throughout all of throughout October, even even into November. And it kind of varies. And the length of an eclipse season, they say certain things, but really, the more and more I've studied, the more I found that it really varies on the person. For example, me, I am 37. I've been having the lunar nodes return for the last year. The entire year has been an eclipse year for me. The entire year has been an eclipse season. Everything has been so insane. Um, and the last eclipse season, oh, there's a lizard coming out. Yeah, it's been quite a wild dream. Um, and, you know, the last eclipse season in Aries, it was just crazy what it caused in my life. I got attacked twice in less than a month in two bar fights. I've never been in a bar fight in my life. Barely ever been in any fights. Um, the eclipse, my Mars is in Rahu and Aries. So yeah, this, it, I guess all I'm just trying to say is that there's, it's going to impact everyone differently. If you're 18 or 36 or 37, this whole year has been like that for you. Um, for others, it's different. Uh... So what are we to make of all that? So basically, that's for everyone. Everyone's ascendant. It's basically saying it's actually a time more of separation of loss and overexerting yourself physically, possibly. And that makes perfect sense with Virgo season, because Virgo's already the time when you want to, 
watch over exerting yourself because it's the time of the harvest. See, the Virgo, it rules the charade season. August 22nd to October 22nd, this is the charade season, the season of harvest and ripening. Everything's already like at its peak. You see, like right now, the weather's perfect. The lizards, animals, everything's kind of already at its prime peak point. The plants are like ready to be harvested. <clears throat> you don't want to try to get more than what you are already having for harvest. You see what I'm saying? You don't want to try to push too hard. You don't want to overstrain yourself, and this is why injuries happen. So you will actually find that even statistically, a lot of the be like athletes tend to have the most injuries around September, late September, October. The sun also gets debilitated at this time, which is the plant of the bones and the overall strength of the body. So the vitality starts dropping and we start pushing too hard and that's when accidents happen. So I strongly, <clears throat> everything I know only reinforces this idea of not overexerting yourself physically at this time. And, you know, I sprained my foot somehow. I don't even really know how. Like, I know I was on my couch, like, sitting on my couch in weird positions for a long time while I was on my computer and stuff. I think that even had a lot to do with it. And that's so funny because, you know, like I've said, the Saturn Pisces, I'm a Pisces. Pisces do with leisure, you know, like being on the couch and being on bed and things like that and somehow injuring myself like that. Um, and then there's been, I've noticed other people injuring themselves more too, so I just want to, emphasize that another person I was talking to yesterday was like laid up for some reason so yeah be more mindful of accidents Virgo is really the sign of accidents it's really the sign of using your intelligence to solve problems and to be useful and to apply your intelligence to get a good result so that's the theme of this month but there also is a theme of loss okay so now for Aries from now until mid-October-ish, or I'm actually kind of just trying to make this forecast for the next two months because it just makes more sense because that's the whole eclipse time. We're just going to do that. Screw it. Okay, so Aries, this is a time, there's a big emphasis on love and divine love and sacred love because Venus is in the seventh house with K2. So for Aries, Lagna, they're still needing to focus on themselves with that Rahu on the Ascendant. But there is this chance of some type of divine love, sacred love, higher love, and even having a divine experience with nature. Finding the sacred and the, the seeing the divine in nature. But with that K2 there and Eclipse happening the 7th, it's also likely loss in love as well is also there. You know, just so we're being obvious, so like don't get your hopes up. Could be a really good time to, to go to an ashram or spend time... Uh, yeah, it could be a good time to sp spend more time at home because Mars is going to be entering <clears throat> the fourth house and get debilitated. So it's almost kind of more of a, it's a definite period of compromise for Aries where they need to compromise more and they will not get everything they set out to do. So just be detached if obstacles come to you. And it could be a good time for foreign travel. Um, and kind of like taking a step back from activity. And it's actually a more relaxing time ahead overall for Aries. But just be mindful because this eclipse is happening in your 12th house of loss. And so there could be definite expenses and losses. And then also be mindful of frustrating possible issues with the uh, with love if you're trying to get too more too sorry too much from it we could say okay um, Aries kind of definitely has more of a crazier time than most coming up okay so Taurus Taurus rising this is a great time for a cleanse for a healing for getting back on your healing routine, tapping into that Virgo season energy because your Lagnesh is in the sixth bhava and strong with K2. Um, rearranging, reorganizing your health routine or your, your just routine of life. Great detox period. Could even be good to, to be using socializing to get ahead a little bit. 
Um, but, and it's, uh, it should be a pretty good time for wealth and money and resources overall. <clears throat> there will likely be more activity with siblings because of that Mars in the third. Oh my God, there's a hummingbird right in front of me. Wow. Okay, so Taurus is going to feel joy. Taurus is going to feel the joy of like a hummingbird. Wow, that was unbelievable. I wanted to turn the camera around for you guys, but I didn't want to scare him. You're not supposed to act too like aggressively around hummingbirds. You're supposed to also never use profanity around hummingbirds. So I have to make sure I don't use any profanity, which is tough for me with my Rahu in the second. <clears throat> Oh, wow. I mean, Taurus, that's just, that's why I like doing these outside. Taurus is going to have a joyful time, actually. And there's this, that sacred nature aspect, that sacred and divine beauty in nature, that's going to be very big for Taurus because its ruling planet is in Libra with K2, the most spiritual planet, sign of nature. Um, the eclipse will be happening in its 11th house and... Wait, is that correct? Yeah. Its 11th house... And it's sixth house. See, what's interesting is the eclipse is going to be happening in Pisces, the very end of Pisces, actually, the lunar eclipse. And then the solar eclipse will be happening in Libra. So it's like we're not actually having an eclipse in Aries. We're having one at the very end of Pisces, even though Rahu is still in Aries. So there's these themes of the Pisces, watery, emotional stuff coming up, too. And this is also why there's been even more water damage and things like I've been predicting with Saturn and Pisces. So that's all still very true there even more true for Aries. Um, danger around water, that's all still going to be even more true during the eclipse season, especially when the lunar eclipse is happening around September 17th. So definitely caution people with being around water at sea at that time. Um, but for Taurus, I think it's going to be overall a joyful time, or the hummingbird would not have came by to tell me that. So now Gemini great period for love and relationships in a sense because venus is in the fifth jupiter's on the ascendant but jupiter is starved in gemini <clears throat> so this can mean too much for gemini's they really have to stay on track with their purpose and not just be like casually superficially doing things for superficial sake you know um with that jupiter going retrograde they're going to feel more of a sense of purpose wait what am I really doing with my life? And they're going to want to act along with that. And I encourage that. And you should encourage that. Um, it's a good time for bhakti and devotion and hard work in the workplace with Saturn retrogra retrograding through the 10th house. But this is overall a strong time for Gemini as well. Um, but that eclipse will happen in the 10th house. So they need to be working hard at this time we could put it that way and not ignoring the workplace um yeah for for gemini the losses could be in the career field potentially um <clears throat> or it could be something frustrating happening with children um all right cancer watch your spending at this time cancers um the sun is moving through your third house so there may be more sibling karma is going on, more activity with your siblings, because Mars is also the planet of siblings, it's in your ascendant. But that's another side, is you're gonna have a debilitated Mars in your ascendant, um, and an eclipse in your ninth house. So it's like a very stagnant uh, time for Cancers, not gonna be the most happy time. Um, there may be more events happening with home, with vehicles, because Venus is going through their fourth, Mars is in the first. Might be a good time to rearrange your home, to uh, clean your home, change it up, uh, or maybe clean your vehicle, rearrange your vehicle, um, uh, or even investing. Could be a good time to invest because of the fourth house. Um, I think Cancers will kind of have uh, it'll be It'll be pretty safe for them, but I don't think it'll be a great time either because of that Mars debilitate on the Ascendant and um, the uh, lunar nodes in the 4th and 10th. Okay, Leo. 
Leo, the sun is going through the second house, so it's a time of earning for y'all, working, harvesting what you have worked for and, and reaped all the things you've been working on over the last year. Uh, it's kind of a building month, we could say. But at the same time, um, they need to be very careful around water because Mars is going to be in the 12th house debilitated so there's like losses due to water or fire or fire being put out in water or some sort of thing with that mars and cancer and then saturn is in the eighth house in retrograde in a water sign so that's like that can literally indicate death you know i'm not saying anyone's gonna die but like <clears throat> just be careful um okay think about how uh you know trump was like he has, he's a Leo with Saturn in the 8th, and he had the assassination attempt happen, and that his eclipse, um, the eclipse was happening in Rahu and Ketu, or in the 3rd and ninth. What house rules the ear? <coughs> the 3rd house. The 3rd house rules the ear. That's where the eclipse was happening. His ruling planet Sun is in <clears throat> Gemini. Gemini is the third sign, sign of the year. With it, he was born in eclipse in Gemini. Very interesting. Um, I have been planning to make a video on this, uh, but in case I don't get a chance to, like no one has pointed out the fact that where that assassination attempt happened was in the path of the Great American Eclipse. It was right there in the path of it, and you know it's just. If I got time to make another video, I'll talk about that. But that's like a crazy connection to the eclipse that like no one has has pointed out. Okay, so Leo needs to be careful, just like it needed to be careful back then, um, and especially now that Mars, one of its key planets for Leo, has entered in the twelfth house, um, and is debilitated. So have fun, but be careful. And it's kind of like get ready for this eclipse because this Leo is one of the the sun. The sun is one of the things that gets eclipsed. It's going to get eclipsed in early October. So basically, Leo, a lot of the important stuff you want to get done, try to get it done before the equinox comes around September 22nd because then your sun's going to be debilitated and you're going to be a lot weaker. And that's when the injury, wow, a huge hawk just flew through and landed in the yard. So hawks are ruled by the sun hawks are messengers mm, but it was going in this inauspicious direction so uh leos will actually not be able to get done everything they want to get done probably this month but so focus on what is most important and you'll have to make sacrifices which is a leo thing you'll have to make fire sacrifice to the things that aren't going to be as important and it's like say your orchard and your harvest you only have time to harvest enough things you need to harvest the important most important things let's put it that way and um <clears throat> and then just start being more cautious and more mindful around the solar eclipse both eclipse seasons but especially the october 2nd solar eclipse the few days going up to that the few days after that be very careful um don't eat too much on a solar eclipse either. Try to eat as lightly as possible because your digestion doesn't really work, basically, at that time. All right, Virgo. Virgo is a good productive period. I'm looking at the hawk to see if he gives me any signs about Virgo. Um, Venus will be crossing the second, so that's a good productive earning period, but then there will be an eclipse in the second house. So it can be uh, a sense of I don't know if you could see that that was the hawk yeah that was in the auspicious direction though so virgo will be um will be very productive this month overall good earnings more active more recognized at the there yeah more recognized at this time because jupiter will be in the 10th house going retrograde so this is a great time for virgo really to be expanding in all areas of life expanding career and then, yeah, Mercury, that's right, Mercury is about to enter Virgo and get exalted. So that's like, this is one of the strongest times of the year for Virgo people, actually. But keep in mind, that lunar eclipse is still going to happen in the seventh house. So there could be some messy, like, things going on with relationships or the public. And it could be a time just to be careful, like, yeah, just don't over-socialize or 
don't be out too much during that lunar eclipse or just kind of be mindful that that's more of the area to compromise in but like you yourself your career your productivity you doing good karmas and good deeds in the world is very strong right now and um being the best version of yourself we could say um but we would say that it's probably a good time to uh be alone more like if you're you know yeah thanks hawk um <clears throat> And that's just been true overall for the Saturn the seventh is like uh, it's an important time to change. Saturn slowly changes how we deal with the house over the time that he transits it. You know, so the seventh house he's slowly maturing you and making you slowly make changes to your social life, to your relations, to all these things. <clears throat> Now Libra, Libra has an interesting thing because it's going to have a solar eclipse happen which could be very unfortunate in their ascendant. But then they're also, the ruling planet Venus is very strong right now. So right now Libras are feeling very strong. I did a reading for a Libra the other day and they were having an amazing time and doing really well in life. But so I would say just watch out for the eclipse time around October, uh, like the last few days of September then October 2nd, the five days before the eclipse, and the five days after, the most important ones to watch out for. And then <clears throat> watch for your health. Focus on your health more at this time. And especially around the lunar eclipse, around September 17th, the night of the 17th to the 18th. Be just very vigilant and watchful overall about your health and routine at this time, but especially at that time. <clears throat> And then know that once the sun enters Libra, you need to start slowing down and taking it easy more. Scorpio. Scorpio, it's a great time for a retreat or a vacation. Going to an ashram, checking out from the world. Um, and it's not like you can't do any work. It's a, a balance. There's a balance of work and play. Right now, Mercury's in the 10th for, for Scorpio, so it's still a strong, productive time. And then as Mercury goes through Virgo, they're likely to make more money. They're likely to get rewarded in some way, get some sort of gain, some sort of title, some sort of, uh, like say you've been going, working on some yoga certification. You'll probably get your yoga certification title then. Or, you know, you get some sort of stamp, diploma, degree from the 11th house. And that's that Mercury transit. Um, but then Saturn is in the 5th. So the mind doesn't feel as sharp and feels more sluggish for Scorpios. Jupiter in the eighth, that's really great for the spirituality, like diving more into astrology, the occult. Um, so it's overall a great time for spiritual practices for Scorpio, but there could be some hit, some unforeseen losses and expenses and separations happening for them because like, <clears throat> The, the the sorrow cycle deals with that and also the solar eclipse is happening in their 12th house of loss oh and the ruling plan is debilitated geez so scorpio is kind of not yeah i'm just going to say overall this is scorpio is going to have more of the difficult one of the more difficult times i would think over this next two months but then the sun will enter scorpio and they'll probably bounce back up we'll talk about that then sag Sag, it's a great time for love and relationships, but also for inner work. Um, but Sag needs to watch out for danger from water, which is really the omen of the inner work. Focus more on your emotions and your emotional life. I know of one Sag client recently who <clears throat> was going through their Saturn return with Saturn in the fourth house and has been having a lot of painful emotions. And for a while, they were kind of running and escaping and hiding from that into like over socializing or things like that because the ruling planet Jupiter is in the seventh. They've finally like quit doing that, actually gone to like a rehab and places like that, which was really good for them because they were starting to drink way too much. And so that's a healthy sat or that's a, a sag transitioning from unhealthy to healthy healthier emotions healthier water you see what i'm saying drinking is like the a great metaphor for like muddying the waters spiritually right um no judgment of course we all drink. i 
I drank too much this summer too because I've had Saturn and Pisces, you know, and I've been muddying the waters as well. Um, watch for danger from water, especially around the home. Saturn is in the fourth house. Otherwise, it's actually a very productive time for Sag and uh, good for career as well because Mercury is exalted in the 10th. <clears throat> now, almost out of water. <clears throat> Capricorn. Capricorn's having a pretty good work phase overall. Capricorn is going to have Jupiter retro through its six, so it's going to feel cap caps are already usually pretty kappa. So then you're going to need to watch the sugars and the kappa things. Things that uh, aggravate kappa, they're going to need to watch out for that. Um, and yeah, it's a good time to be making changes to career because of that eclipse happening in your career in your 10th house. It could also be a time of disappointment in career. That is also a possibility. Um, Saturn uh, is in the third and the sun is in the ninth. That can be indicating a lot of travel. Um, so Capricorns could end up doing some sort of international travel. Actually, yeah, because of Mars being in the seventh house, the sign of foreign lands in Cancer. So yeah, Caps might, you might see them doing a little bit more foreign travel. Um, but they're all, they're overall going to be like solving problems more smoothly and having a fairly good productive time. Aquarius. Aquarius money is tighter for Aquarius is because the ruling planet Saturn's in the second house. That's been a theme I've noticed with a lot of Aquarius. They're they're having a tighter time with money. Um, don't forget to eat well and like pacify Vata Dosha. A lot of the Aquarius rising that I know are just they're like wondering why they're having all this anxiety. I'm like, uh, have you eaten in like the last six hours? What are you doing? They're just, you know, there's been little bat cases in their head doing stuff. Um, I'm an Aquarius. I know this more than most, you know, so <clears throat> just eat some Vata pacifying food when you're disturbed or fretting or having anxiety because otherwise it's a really great time for spirituality and devotion and Dharma and finding your sense of purpose for an Aquarius, as long as they can get off of, like like I said, money issues or low self-worth, lack of self, lack type issues, they'll be doing great, because Jupiter's in the fifth house, so it's like a profound time for learning and education and getting initiated into the higher mysteries of life, writing, great time for children, and yeah, the eclipse in the ninth house is going to be again this is where it's going to be a weird contradictory thing with that that good venus transit in libra but then also that eclipse they may have a mix of wonderful sense of dharma love for god type things with venus in the ninth wow everything's working out and then also have that sun eclipse in the ninth oh my god i feel like an alien and i don't belong in this culture which is a common aquarius theme as well Probably experience both depending on your chart, but great time for bhakti. Also, good time for for well, no, I actually shouldn't say that. Leave that alone. Maybe there's just nothing else noteworthy to know. You know, that's the thing. Sometimes not that much happens in two months, and it's not like every single sign I feel compelled to like say all these important things about. You know, and that really makes sense logically if you think about it. I think the forecasters who are always oh my god, this is going to be the big month for you every month for every sign. Uh, no, that's not reality. So then Pisces, it's actually a great time for study, for learning, for occult and Jyotish study because of that eclipse happening in the 8th house with Venus in the 8th in Libra. I've felt so much more like able to predict accurately since Venus entered Libra and that's why it was, I, was, uh, take, I was taking too long and not able to make my, one, of my, one of those forecasts for a while when Venus was debilitated and I just wasn't going to force it. I just didn't don't force it, you know. Uh, as an astrologer yourself, understand that what you're doing is an old, old job. Like, sure, you do need to make it fit the 9 to 5 modern template, but only to the degree that you have to. No more, you know. A real astrologer can't be moved off of their center, whatever that is. And so, 
let's just say that that's kind of a theme for Pisces right now. Um, sun is crossing the seventh. It's easy to get thrown to to have a lot of people making a lot of uh, like the world demanding more of you than you can give, or with clients or with this or that. So I found like yeah, I just sorry I can't help you early. You know what I mean? Or like I just can't be thrown off. Well, everyone's different this way, but some a lot of us Pisces are like overly e e easily able to like give away all of ourselves to people. You know what I mean? And uh, those of you who've had sessions with me, I'm kind of like that in some ways. I always like keep giving more time or this and that. And then you have to just more part of maturing is nope, sorry. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or just kind of saying no and saying I'm sorry. I would love to interact and share more with you, but my time is valuable. It's not even like the information. I don't mind giving free, but it's more the time that is what's really valuable. You only have so much time on this planet. <clears throat> That's really been a big theme with Saturn and Pisces, you know? So for Pisces risings, uh, be more mindful of the time you have and what you're doing with your time. And then, of course, the obvious one that I've been talking about a lot is the danger around water. You know what I mean? So, of course, reinforcing that in case you haven't seen me talk about that endlessly all summer long. But, yeah, there is still... For Pisces, they are especially going to need to be careful of, again, like the unhealthy water internally, the unhealthy emotions, making sure your emotions are healthy and your spiritual connection to God is healthy and not stagnating. And then you'll probably be safe around water. But if you're not and you're, <clears throat> yeah, like ignoring all that, then you are more likely to be having danger around water as an omen of like, yeah, your inner water, your inner emotions, your blood, your your rhythm of breath all these cancer pisces scorpio themes are toxic so um that's the theme the lagnesh is in jupiter has been in rigashira which is a super like worldly type seeking the soma type nakshatra um there's possible luck and love with romance with mercury entering the seventh but again there's this theme of loss and separation so you don't want to try to push for anything more than you can't get at this time um, or try to push too hard but there is some luck or, with romance but it's important not to be pushing or trying too hard for that and then just be very mindful of that eclipse coming up around September 17 because it will be in your ascendant so just um, that's the like the period of compromise be more cautious and more careful um, Pisces natives you know around September the five days coming up to September 17th and then after that. And yeah, hopefully everything is okay with me then, but I will try to be a little bit more cautious then. But like, let's say that, oh my God, there's amazing waves coming and I have to go surf. I'll still go surf during that time, but I'm just going to be more cautious and more careful. And so that's, I don't ever want to scare anyone, but that's what's, that's all I'm trying to say. Like, you know, uh, in the video, I, did, I recently made a post on my Instagram about this. Back in November of 2023, I made a video talking about how, you know, avalanches, things falling into the sea, houses like falling into the river um, was a possible theme. And we had that exact thing happen uh, in North Carolina with the house crashing into the ocean. And North Carolina was in the southeast part of the U.S., just like I highlighted. So, so anyways, um... I think that there will probably be more things like that, like even more intense and crazy things with this eclipse and water issues around water with that moon being eclipsed with Saturn and Neptune. The moon's going to be right next to Neptune. So it's going to be like, oh, like the illusion, like the sense of self. We're going to like lose ourself in something. And I wouldn't be surprised if there's like a very big type of like world event that happens. You know what I mean? That's like involving water, a very dangerous like, kind of tragic event involving water like a like a tsunami or like a flooding or a thing like that because um one of the last times Saturn and Neptune were in hard aspects was when the Katrina ha situation happened and the 2004 tsunamis in Indonesia which killed hundreds of thousands so hopefully none of that happens and we'll be great uh but just anyways let's just be cautious okay hope you guys enjoy that uh, please leave your feedback. Uh, thanks. Happy studies, you guys. And uh, I'll talk to you guys in either late October or November for the next forecast. Thanks.